Hello everyone. Hope you're all well. Good afternoon and welcome to my channel. Uh, thank you to those of you that have just subscribed. It's lovely to see you here. For those of you that have never met me or heard me before, my name's Tracy Evans. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I've had a few requests and what I like to do is if I've got an extra, if I've got a spare hour here and there, that's really good English. If I've got a spare hour here and there, then I do like to try and respond to those requests. I've been asked for some simple techniques um, in different ways. That's why I did the demos and the videos the last couple of times on my YouTube channel. So today is a follow up from my previous videos. And again, I'm going to be using lemon and ruby, mainly because the other day I created a video and I, I haven't used these colours for a long, long time. And sometimes if you want to make your work look a little bit different, it's good to use colours outside your comfort zone because then it makes everything look a little bit different. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm using colours that are outside my comfort zone and and i like that i like using colors that are outside my comfort zone just to give them a try and see what it's like so i do love that so what i'm going to do let's just move this out of the way and we'll describe that afterwards what i've got here is a piece of white card four and a half inches by six and a half inches and it's smooth white card i'm using the reverse of centura pearl you could use pink frog buckingford smooth whatever works for you and i'm just going to stand up just so that i can make sure that you're in camera and just add these just want to add this low tack tape which is scotch removable tape so i'm just going to add this around the outside edges of my card what i'm trying to do is when i do something on my youtube channel i might i like to make sure it's not just a one trip pony i like to show that the techniques can work in lots of different ways whether it's using the same color paints whether it's using the same masking off technique you know just to so that it follows on so i do like to do it a few times i don't like to just um not follow on with my video so i'm just going to remove that so that i can um literally remove it onto my gel press so what i've got here let's move this onto one side what i've got here is my gel press and i don't clean my gel press very frequently i do every now and then if i've used oxide inks etc so i've got the gel press and mine's five inches by seven inches you can use any gel press of your choice it can be a small round one a small square one it can be the giant one whatever you've got you can adapt so if your gel press you're struggling to get some prints sometimes it might be that you've had it quite a while and it just needs a little bit of baby oil rubbing in and allowing that to soak in overnight so i just apply it with my fingers very gently and then I allow that to dry overnight. Also, I the gel press comes in between two pieces of acetate and I've removed the acetate from the bottom and from the top. Just added it to my All and Create acrylic block because I find it easier to handle. Plus it doesn't slip around as much and I find it easier to use. I find it easier to handle if I put it on my acrylic block. So I've removed that plastic from the top. And as I said before, I'm going to use my acrylic paints, Lemon and Ruby. Because I wanted to use these colours uh, and because I like to challenge myself to do more than one project, I've got a piece of scrap card, as you can see on the side, where I've brayed off before. And I'm going to use that for my brayering off purposes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some blobs of the paint you don't really need too much paint, but I'm just going to add some blobs. I don't stress too much if I've added too much paint because you can remove that paint. No problem at all when you use your brayer. So I'm just going to add the ruby. The ruby is a very powerful colour, so don't add too much of the ruby or else it will overpower everything else. And what I'm going to do is just use my brayer just to bray it over 
that paint. Remove the excess onto my cardstock and then go down. And as you can see, I'm sort of lifting the brayer as I go along. Can you see how powerful that ruby is? So you can, if you wish, you can just add a little bit more of the yellow. But be careful, you just want to use a gentle touch because you don't want to remove all the paint you've already added. So I've just added a little bit more of that yellow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the totally dotty stencil, like so. And what we can do is we can use another piece of white card and you could take a print now if you wanted and I'd get those circles but I really don't want to take that print I want to just press this stencil onto the gel press because I want those circles so just allow just allow it to rest on there and then lift and what I'm going to do is take my card that is now stuck of course it is and then I'm just going to take that print on my card. So I'm just going to rub over. Like so. Just to take that print. Now, if you've got dexterity problems, take a piece of scrap paper, take your brayer and then just bray it over especially if you've got weak wrists. So you can do that way as well. You can bray it over. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to remove my card. And we've got our print that's got some circles on. As you can see here, you've got the circles here. Now, I'm going to just play around with a few ideas before we remove this. You can see we've got the circles here, but I'm just going to play around before we remove the paper. So what I'm going to do is play around again a little bit more because we can take, we can have so many prints and, and decide which one we want to use in our artwork. So I've added the lemon again, and then I'm adding, no, I'm not adding turquoise traces because I want to use turquoise at some point. And then I'm adding the ruby, like so. But again, don't add too much of that ruby because it is rather an overpowering colour. So let me just make sure that I've got several pieces of card. Always make sure that you've got pieces of card at the ready when you're doing gel press printing it's good to have lots of card available again i'm just going to blend that color remove the excess there we go place our stencil over the top and this time take a print of the circles and again if you've got dexterity problems use that brayer on the back of your card and that gives you this background again nice simple technique but you've got a lovely background with those circles so at the moment I'm just building backgrounds as you can see I've got this background that I've also brayed off so it's brilliant you've got lots of different backgrounds so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that dry for a couple of minutes and then what I'm going to do is get a light color paint and I'm just umming and ahhing whether to use something other than white because let me just show you we've got this background that we created first and we've got this background and they've both got white backgrounds so let's just let's use honeydew 
let's use something a little bit different just for a change and what i'm going to do is i'm just letting whoops i'm just letting this dry i mean it looks pretty dry you can see some circles on the gel press if i just tilt it you can see those circles on the gel press so if you're not sure if it's dry, especially when you're using Dean De Wakely paints because they stay wetter longer. If you're using the fresco paints by um, Paper Artsy, then they dry quite quickly. So just, just give it some time. Go and make yourself a brew if you're unsure if it's dry or not. So what I'm going to do now is hope that there's some honeydew in here. It feels very light. So I'm just reaching, oh, there we go, we've got a better one that's a bit fuller. You see, this is the problem with deciding to do things and change things round. So I'm just shaking that honeydew chalk acrylic paint. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this. I keep getting these paint skins that I keep collecting. And I'm just going to prime my brayer. And what I mean by that is allow the paint to go across the brayer. Don't apply the paint directly onto the gel press because you'll just end up removing that paint. So just add a little bit of that paint and you can see the circles through the paint. And then what I'm going to do is hope that I've got another print. Now, one thing you have to remember about the gel press is it's unpredictable. That's part of the fun, the unpredictability, in that you don't quite know what you're going to get. But don't get frustrated by that. Just embrace the unpredictability. That's part of the fun. So we just lift this. See, and I love that background. And the mop-up backgrounds are often my favourite. A bit like that one. That really is a lovely background. Just love that. See, it was quite nice with the um, honeydew. I quite liked that colour. Just makes it a little bit more... You've got a pop of colour, but you've got like that vintage backdrop. So we're just going to wipe up this bit of paint here. like so and then we'll just have another little play while we're just doing this what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these feathers I've had for quite a while it's got quite a nice print on it really the feather has so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same colours with the yellow, the lemon even, add that lemon and just again just adding dots don't use any sharp implements on your gel press it's not good for your gel press at all so be careful what you use just making sure I've got another piece of cardstock oh I'm, I'm very well prepared here I've got my cardstock ready, which is a miracle, really. Let me just make sure that you can see that on there. Bring in my brayed cardstock, which is getting nicely layered with colour. And just take off the excess, like so. And let's place this feather. Don't want it that way let's place it that way this time and what i'm going to do is just let that rest on there as you can see and i'm just going to place my card just on the gel press so these feathers were i think they were by uh, jelly arts but if you don't have a feather, just go and pick a leaf up out the garden 
or pick a feather up out the garden or on one of your walks. So, so now we have another print. Now look at that. Oh, I love it. I love that. Small things amuse small minds. So I'm just going to pick that feather up. So look at the feather. So let me show you what else you could make. So do you remember this brayed off background that we created because you're just braying off the excess? You could put your feather on there or you could put your feather on this background or you could put it on a plain white background or you could place it over the top so the ghosting shows, but that's too nice to cover up. But you've now got a feather that you've decorated as well. So what I'm going to do now, I've got, we'll just do one more print and then we'll actually make a card, believe it or not. So I don't know whether there's going to be a feather on there. There looks to be a little bit of a, a registration, doesn't there? But I don't know whether that'll show up once we apply the, the honeydew paint, but we'll soon see. Once you've got your brayer and it's covered in paint, just make sure that it is, it is removed, the paint is all removed before you add that honeydew layer. The honeydew layer that I'm just getting all over my skin. So we're going to then prime our brayer once more. So a little dollop of paint and I'm just going to prime my brayer. And I'm just going to add that over the top. I don't know whether I'll get a print because I did add rather a thin layer of paint. So I may not get a print. But as I say, that's the unpredictability of the gel press. And as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really matter. I'm having fun and that's, that's what counts. And you could have a whole day just creating backgrounds. And then when you're stuck for ideas, as you can see, I've got a little print of the feather. It's not too dark, but I can still use that. I will still use that background as well. But I think this one is fab. But we will take a closer look at all those backgrounds. Let's take another piece of card now. As you can see, this is just scrap card. I've torn. Now let's lay it this time the honeydew over the gel press and let's just see if there's anything more on there. Sometimes it's worth just adding another layer of paint just to see if you've got anything on there and all I'm going to do is just rub this card and as I say it's just a random piece of card wow 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 I have to say I'm in love that is superb and I will be making a card from that as well wow this is why gel presses are so much fun. So let's cut this down. I'm just going to cut this down just so that we've got a card blank. I'm going to measure it to see what it measures. See if, see if it measures something that we can work with. Because we don't want to get rid of all those wonderful edges. So I'm just trimming away the white. And then we'll create some kind of card blank. So maybe five by seven. Five by seven card, no, five by six and a half. There we go. So I will bring this in so that you can see it. I've just printed, just trimmed it all down. And I didn't trim it down beforehand because it wasn't planned, but look at that fantastic background right let's look at what we've got from our little mini 
printing session. First of all, let me just spend a couple of minutes cleaning up. I just, that looks like worn wallpaper. Have to say, I just think that looks superb. Don't you think that looks like worn wallpaper? <gasps> just think that's just gorgeous. That is one of my favourite prints. So what we've got is we've got these prints. We've got the feather. We've got a sort of a bit of a feather. Let's have a look what else we've got. We've got this background. And then we've got this one that we've got the tape on, which I've not removed yet. But what I'm going to do just with... See, I've got some lovely backgrounds now. So just with this one, I'm just going to add a little bit of turquoise. Just because I think a little bit of turquoise would be lovely. So I'm just adding to my bray and I'm just flicking a little bit of that turquoise just onto my card. Just take my time. And what we're going to do is we're going to create simple, simple cards. Just love that. I love it with the little bit of turquoise. So now I've got something a little bit different to the other backgrounds. So I'm not going to remove it yet. I'm just thinking what I've got here is I've got this lovely numerator stamp that I designed and I absolutely love this stamp. There's just something about it. And what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of cut and dry foam. I can't stop looking at that background. I just love it so much. I hope you get as excited as I do over backgrounds. So I'm taking my lemon acrylic paint. Let's make sure we've got another wipe. If you don't want to use a wipe, then just use your microfiber cloths. And I'm going to add some of the yellow paint. Do I add a bit of turquoise? No, we're going to add just yellow and we're going to add a little bit of paint using my cut and dry foam. So I'll pick up the paint on my cut and dry foam, prime it and then use that like an ink pad. So you've not got too much paint on there. And I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping. To the background. It doesn't show up too much, but it's there. It's here. Just so that you can see. It's just another layer in the background. So what I'm going to do, building those layers up. I'm now going to just wipe that. If you don't wipe the paint off, then your stamps, the detail won't show. So just remember just to wipe your paint off the stamp. Just take a little bit of time and a bit of patience. So I can see in real life, I can see that colour on camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to add, I'm going to do the same thing with turquoise paint. I'm going to prime my cut and dry foam with the paint and then I'm going to use that like an ink pad. And then, let's pick this up, I'm going to add a little bit of stamping here. So what you're doing is you're building up layers and you will see them better in real life. When you hold them close to you, you'll realise that all these layers show up. So just that blue is stunning. So I'm going to add a little bit here. I can still see the yellow of the D here. So I'll quickly just add a little bit more paint before I wipe the whole stamp. Just on this bit here. I love this stamp so much. Just think it's superb. 
it's great for backgrounds. So that gives me that. Wonderful. Love that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my stamp and I'm going to add some of that background detail just to this, this one as well. But I need to clean the stamp first. So just give that a clean. Even though you're going back and using paints, you need to give the stamp a clean because if the layers of paint underneath dry, then all you're going to do is you, you're going to lose detail from your stamp. So I'm just giving that a little bit of a clean before I add the next layer of paint. Right. What we're going to do now is take the same stamp and we're going to, let's put the turquoise back. We're going to take some yellow acrylic paint Again, prime that and add the yellow to your, to your stamp. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take some of the ruby, another piece of cut and dry foam. And this time you're just going to add touches of the ruby, just so that you've got this. And I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping to my other background piece. My hands are getting in a nice mess, which is good. See, now that I love. I've got to do it again now. So just give that stamp a clean. It's the only time I clean my stamps, I don't clean them otherwise. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to take the yellow, prime that paint into the cut and dry foam, and this time get a little bit more detail, a little bit more of the letters with the yellow. Then take your ruby to add some highlights cut and dry foam again and just add some highlights of the ruby onto your stamp and then I'm going to add that in this corner and as you can see I'm not using an acrylic block I'm using it as is oh this is just I adore that background now I've just got to add a little bit more detail just so that it's in threes. Just a little tiny bit of detail, nothing, nothing too much. A little bit of that red, just to give me a little bit up here. And I just want a little bit of detail, that's all I need superb background even if I say so myself I'm so excited by that background and you know what could go on there don't you gorgeous poppies but I may save that for my new release that's coming out on the 15th of March I'll save that background and we'll use the other one because I think one of my stamps that's in the new release will look beautiful on that but at least you know how to create the background, which is good. And obviously I will show you what I create from it. I will show that on social media. But I did want to spend a couple of minutes showing you how to create backgrounds today. So I'm just dabbing that dry. Clean our work area. So what we've got now, let's just move these paints out of the way. So these are the two backgrounds I've worked on. That one I'm going to use for my new release because I just think that's superb. So I'm going to use that, but what a gorgeous background. I mean, that on its own with one element is your card done. So also we've got this one. So what I'm going to do is peel away 
and you can use the low tack tape and you could use that in your card which I may do so we'll leave that there remove the low tack tape from around the edges and you've got low tack tape that you can then use in another project which I have to say I just may do that look at that I love it can you see the circle that's still there here and it's still got a circle here this is how you build up the detail absolutely glorious I absolutely love it I just think it's fab now what we can do is with the feather I would add the pheasant but also so we're flitting from one background to another at the moment because it's sort of like a little mini workshop so what I'm going to do now is where is my stamp stop putting your stamp down Tracy so I'm going to take this stamp now and what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to work with these two backgrounds because I think that that would be a good idea so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to even though I've just cleaned this I'm now going to ink it once again because that's what you do when when you get excited and you start creating it always takes you off in tangents this was not what I'd got planned at all but hey that's the way I create so just adding that yellow again picking up that touch of red that ruby and can you tell now I'm in love with yellow and ruby and what I'm going to do is add a little bit of stamping to the background so that it's in the feather and what I'm doing is I'm hopefully giving you a lesson in layering look at that oh I just love it I absolutely love that that's all it needs that's all it needs oh, I'm just so pleased with the backgrounds just love them you know even without even without stamping, you could create a book just from your backgrounds. Add some notes at the back of your pages and stick the pages together and create a background book just with these backgrounds. So you could have a little book. But look what we've created so far. We've created them. We've created these. We've created this and this. And, you know, I could add turquoise to that, some stamping. Oh, I could be here for about 12 hours. I think you'd be nodding off, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to develop these. So what I'm going to do is, you see, I'm in an ring because deciding on stamp sets is the hardest bit. So what I'm going to do is take my pheasant I love the pheasant such a graceful stamp just take this and we need a spare piece of white card there's always spare pieces of white card lying around in Tracy's craft room always is so what I'm going to do now is ink my pheasant now, if you didn't want to ink him in black, you could ink him in different colours and you could add a bit of turquoise to the pheasant as well. You see now, this is what it's like all the time. I end up doing one thing. Let's just give that a clean. Actually, have you noticed that in this video, I've spent more time cleaning than anything else because I keep changing my mind. I'm just wondering whether to just grab a different ink pad. We can test it anyway. We can test what we like. It's just, so I'm just going to test it with warm breeze.
and, and, and touches of the black. So what I'm going to do is ink the pheasant with the warm breeze. Sometimes it's nice to do different things and just experiment, just to see where it takes you. And what I'm going to do is just add some touches of black to my pheasant. And I can't really see what I'm adding because it's dark. Let's just move our backgrounds out of the way. And we can't ruin, the, ruin those backgrounds because we're adding cut out pieces. So we're not going to ruin those backgrounds now. But I want to see what the pheasant looks like in the touches of turquoise colour. I've got my acrylic block so I can just lift to make sure I get those central areas. Ooh, look how rich that is. You see that? It would look nice on that background. Oh, crikey. You're so spoilt for choice. This is the problem. So I just love that. Look at that in the turquoise. And the black. I'm just going to block that. Just to make sure. That it doesn't smudge. And you can always tell better when you cut out. So we'll just cut the pheasant out. You can use the other bits of text, etc. if you wish. But I haven't done any prep, as in I haven't cut imagery out because I'm sort of going with the flow and deciding what I want to use. And also I'm doing some experiments for you live on the video because I think that's important as well, just so that you see me experiment with my designs. And I, I'm a great believer in, in that you should see warts and all. You should see exactly how projects can come together, how we change our minds, how we're not perfect, you know, and that we also make mistakes, things don't work. So I think it's important that you see that. So just and this like so. And I've got lots of little bits on this stamp that I can I can use, which is what I like. And we're, we're just going to experiment with a couple of different colour ideas. Let's cut the pheasant out. So I'm hoping you don't mind watching me cutting out. Because I didn't plan, oh, I've got poppies cut out or, oh, I've got this cut out. What I'm trying to show you is that the ideas work with all the stamps. So if you wanted, like in the previous projects, you wanted to add poppies, then you could add poppies. So this will go here like this. But what I'm thinking is, let's have a go. Let's clean the stamp again and we'll do two pheasant cards. So grab that. Another piece of card. Just give the stamp a clean because it'll be covered in that ink. Especially because I want to use paint now. Because I've not used the pheasant with paint and I want to see what he looks like. And no time like the present and doing it live. So I'm going to use that yellow paint, add a little bit of ruby, like so, and a tiny little touch of turquoise. Then what I'm going to do is, as always, prime my cut and dry foam and I'm going to ink, because there's a lot of fine detail on that pheasant, 
I don't know whether it'll all be picked up with the paint, but it doesn't matter because that's the whole point of experimenting. It's about experimenting with different, different mediums. Just a little bit of turquoise. What I'm going to do is, because I've only added fine layers of the paint, I'm just going to spritz lightly with water. And then I'm going to, and looking at that, we can see that my acrylic block needs a really good clean. So I just spritzed it with water, mainly because it was only a light layer of paint. And what I want to do is just make sure that it, it's got a little bit of moisture in there. I don't know how it's going to pick the detail up. I have no idea whether or if it will pick the detail up. But unless you try these things, you don't know. So as you can see, it's stuck. Uh, what I've done here, I can show you the mistake I've made. Let me show you the mistake. The paint, it works beautifully, but the paint is too thin. So it's removed the paint layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this again, adding more paint. So let's just experiment again, because that looks beautiful. So what it needs is a bit more paint. And you know what the other mistake was, don't you? Is leaving it sitting on the card. So let's try again with the paints, because that looked fantastic. So this time, another piece of card. I've got a piece of card here. Let's just do that again. But this time, let's just do something a little bit differently. So a little bit more paint and don't allow it to sit as long because you're using your acrylic paints. And you remember I always say acrylic paints are sticky. That shows you how sticky acrylic paint is. So we're quite quickly adding touches of the red, little touch of the blue, spritz with water, then stamp and don't leave it too long. There you go. So you get a pheasant. So we're going to cut that out. So just remember when you're doing that, not to do it too much. So don't add too much of your paint and don't allow it to sit on the card too much. So we're just going to experiment with that again just to make sure that my facts are correct. So let's do it again, another piece of scrap card. And what we're going to do this time is let's not spritz the stamp with water, see if we get a different effect. So this is all about playing. Because on the others, if you remember, I didn't, I didn't spritz with water. Do you remember the background stamp? I didn't spritz that with water. So just taking exactly the same, because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you as many ideas as possible to use your stamps. And I'm trying to show you also where you can go wrong so don't let's spritz this time and this time let's just stamp now don't forget that acrylic is very sticky 
so don't yes there we go don't allow it to sit too long just love it absolutely love it then give your stamp a clean so we're going to cut because let me show you now let me show you let me show you so this one is more watery because i added water and this one is more detailed so we're going to cut that one out just cleaning up my mess just so that we don't get in too much of a mess so the lessons learned are when you're using paint always clean your stamps when you're using paint only spritz lightly with water and don't allow it to sit on the card too long or else your card will tear so just remember those lessons just give that a wipe and let's cut out let's cut out the pheasant so just cutting him out also if you if you're very unsure about doing it with paints because obviously I've used the paints because it coordinates beautifully then with the whole project let's say that you don't have paints and you don't like paints at all so let's do it with ink pads and show that you can do it with ink pads as well just think that I always wanted this to be an experimental video as well just so that we experimented with a few things so let's experiment with the ink pads as well and don't worry that these are the same colors because we will add some shading so that it pops so don't worry about that too much just so this is a video that is not all about prepping everything it's about experimentations and having a play with our projects so that's what it's all about so just cut that out just cut it out oops and he he or she whatever can go here but what you might say is well that's going to get lost it won't get lost if we add some shading around the outside plus there's something else we can do as well but i just want to test let's test how it differs with the oxides so we've got what did we have we had yellow and red didn't we So let's have the yellow and red and a touch of turquoise there we go so let's use these three colors just put all these on one side just put the paint lids on let's just add these let's take the pheasant and we'll add some yellow squeezed lemonade to the background so I'm using my Distress Oxides and this is Squeezed Lemonade. Not a very dark colour, I must admit. So I've got Candied Apple and I've got Mermaid Lagoon. Don't add too much of the Mermaid Lagoon, I'm sure that's a dark colour. And am I going to spritz with water? Hmm. Let's not spritz with water and see what it looks like. So I've not spritzed this with water. If you spritz it with water, obviously then 
it's going to give you a more watercolour effect, a bit like the paint did. And because we're using the oxides, as with all inks, I'm allowing that to rest on the card. I'm not lifting it up straight away. And the advantage of the oxides is it's not going to stick. You see, that's lovely as well. Oh, I'm going to be spoilt for choice. Oh, I'm going to have to cut that out as well now. We're going to be so spoilt for choice in what we're doing here. But hey, we're having fun at the same time. Who says a pheasant has to be black? Nobody. It doesn't have to be black, does it? Of course it doesn't. It can be any colour we wish. So just cut my pheasant. I'm going to have that many backgrounds and that many pheasants. And no projects made at this rate. Hello, there's the video done. We've done backgrounds and a few bits. That's all I've done with myself. This rem Do you know what this reminds me of? This one, Sweeties. I don't know what sweet Sweeties it reminds me of, but it reminds me of some Sweeties, like rainbows. I can't remember what the sweets are called, but it does remind me of that. So just cutting his little feet out. Oh, crikey. So this, this could end up being the longest video in history known to man on a YouTube. And I always say, don't make your YouTube videos too long, Tracy, so that people don't get tired. And here I am. I've never been able to create anything within five seconds. I'm terrible. And I think we're already on 50 minutes. I haven't even made a card yet. Where does the time go? Can you imagine me doing this on a chander? Oh, let's just have a play. Let's Tracy just create some backgrounds. Yeah, that'd go down really well. Right. What am I thinking now? Right, what have I got round my desk? So what I'm thinking now is, guess what? We need black card and a die cutting machine. We need black card and we need a die cutting machine. This is, we're doing everything live. Nothing's been prepped. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. What I want is a couple of circles. So I'm thinking a couple of circles. So let's just get the... die cutting machine. And I'm just going to cut a couple of circles in black. circles. Let's cut another one out. Hey, you never thought you were going to see me die cutting, did you? So a couple of circles, like so. Dump everything on the floor like you do if you're in Tracy's craft room. Then what we're going to do is bring in. Do you think we'll actually finish a car today? What do you think? Right. So I'm thinking like that. Let me just look in the camera. So it still looks like a feather. The pheasant will go here. Like so. Bring in this one. This will go here. Like this. Just bring it in a little bit, like so. See, I like the coloured ones. I like the coloured ones, like so. So that you can see at the moment. Let me just 
See, there's another way we can highlight that one. I can highlight that one with a shadow, absolutely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a little bit more stamping. If you wanted, you could add the poppies here with the feather, but I just think with the beard, it seems a good idea to use the feather. So what I'm going to do is bring a little bit of turquoise into the stamping. So just add a little bit of yellow to the stamp set. Little touch of red. I know what we'll do. Little touch of red. Just add a little bit more stamping. I always forget where I've added the text, where I've added the paint. Just going to add a little bit more stamping. That's it, a little bit more detail. See if there's anything left. There we go, so it's just in threes. Just give that stamp set a clean. So, I always use that stamp set. It's one of them stamp sets that I can't put down. It's one of them that if you just added paints to the stamp set and stamped with it onto white card, it just looks fantastic on its own. It really does. So what I'm going to do is just add this here. Don't worry, we're going to make it pop. We will make it pop a little bit more. Let me just, let's see, that's better, that's better. We will add some black splatters as well. So we're going to add that circle. It's just that, no, I do prefer the black, the little pop of black, just like so. That's it. So I'm going to stick some of these elements down, like so. And we've got to add all the little details. The little details are what bring it to life. And all you've done is created some simple backgrounds. And now what you're doing is you're bringing everything you're giving everything some life you're giving it with your little focal images that's when it comes to life just add this here and what i'm going to do is use my scrap paper as i always do and just press that down i always use the scrap paper to test to press it down and then when you've got some excess glue, what you can do is you can dab your focal image onto a piece of scrap paper, just so that you don't get any excess glue. So if you're a bit heavy handed with your glue, you can just press it onto a piece of scrap paper and that just removes the excess so that you don't get too much, especially where his thin legs are. So it just gives you that. So what I'm going to do is, Find my little ink tense pencil. Just add a little bit of ink tense around his tail. Oh, we've still got work to do yet. We've still got work to do to our little character yet. He's not he's not finished yet. We've got work to do. This is sometimes when you can you can give up. This is the this is the cut. This is the stage I call where a lot of people give up. This is where people just don't want to carry on because they say, "Oh no, it's messed up. It doesn't look right." But for me, these this is the best bit. This is the best bit where you bring everything to life. But I do know from experience, been there, done that. The amount of times things go in the bin 
before we give them chance to develop. If you don't want to give it chance to develop, walk away. Walk away from your project. If it's not, not talking to you, not singing to you, and it doesn't fill you with joy, walk away from the project. It's just important you, you don't lose heart. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to get my much loved, my much loved ephemera digits. So 438. So we're going to get that much loved stamp. Use it all the time. Now, what we want to do is we've got this pop of black. Now, you don't want to just put that pop of black and then nothing else. You need another pop of black somewhere. And it's important that you think about that. So I'm using the ephemera digits and I'm using the little numbers here. And what I'm going to do is add those little numbers to the pheasant. Let me just lift it up so that you can see those little numbers added to the pheasant. Is that important? Oh, yes, it is. So what you need to do then is add some of those numbers in your background. So it looks like you've thought about the whole process, that the project is now getting its design elements. It's like when you do a room, it's the finishing touches. So that's what you need to think about. So uh, do you know what I love here? It's even got some little circles here just under. I know, I know, very strange. What we're going to do now is bring it to life a little bit more. What we're going to do is take the circular stencil, totally dotty, and what we're going to do is we're going to take orange, yellow, red. We're going to take some distress crayons. And I think in this video, you're gonna need a brew. <laughs> but I've got to show you something. I went out in the garden, and this is me going off on a tangent. Look what I found. Do you know that plant? It's is it Fiji Facilius or something like that. It grows the orange lantern flowers. But look at this from the garden. This is the skeleton from the garden. How wonderful is that? Do you know? Little things make me happy. Just love them. So what I'm going to do now is I've got my distress crayons because I'm determined, as I was last year, to use everything I've got. So I've got my distress crayons. You can either have a damp cloth or a baby wipe. Oops. And what I'm going to do is I've got my stencil here and I'm just going to add some distress crayon around these circles. You haven't better make it four, Tracy. So I've gone with yellow, then I'm adding a bit of orange to the circles, a little bit of orange. I nearly forgot which one I did then. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch my finger on my baby wipe, and then I'm going to blend the colours. I'm going to blend the Distress Crayon with my damp finger. So I've used mustard seed distress crayon, spice marmalade distress crayon and candied apple. And then I'm going to use a bit of candied apple and my fingers are still moist. And I'm just going to add some of that candied apple just to add some depth around the outside edge. So just adding that. Just blending it. And these are what I call decorating your lounge. It's, it's like adding the finishing touches. You know, when you decorate a lounge, you know, you don't just put your focal image in like your settee or your fireplace and then don't think about anything else. So I'm not going to lift it yet. Do I want to? Let's add a little bit more yellow just to give it a bit more vibrancy. And just blend the colour. Then a little bit more red right on the edge. Just keep adding the distress crayon right on the edge. Right. Lift 
this up and this is what you call bringing your project to life but we've got four circles there and i can't live with four circles it's just not not right so we're going to have to make it odd numbers so we're going to make it seven circles just because that's me i know it's a little bit strange but i'm just repeating the same process with the mustard seed the spiced marmalade blending just dab your finger on a baby wipe if your fingers are not moist and then a bit of the candied apple and it makes me happy that i'm using the distress crayons so just blending that let's add a little bit more yellow just to give it a little bit more vibrancy then go back to the red just to give it a touch more darkness and lift now let me show you what i like one two three four five six so still up but look it congeals around the edges here and i love that but we can't have it one-sided so we need three on this side just so there's some balance so i'm just going to add it doesn't have to be whole circles it can be half circles so again just blend that with your finger a little bit more yellow oh dear a little bit more yellow like so then a touch of the red but if, you, if your fingers dragging just dab it on a baby wipe or a damp cloth and it'll just but the acrylic paint layer should help it blend as well that's better so now we're bringing the card to life with a few more details and I think it's important that we add those details it's just lovely so lovely so what i want to do now is i just want to add i want some to add some delicate black splatters don't go over the top with the splatters just delicate black splatters and i'm just going to add some is that white? No, that's nearly black. I nearly did it with the black again then. So I'm just going to add some white. Because that white always lifts the card. So what I'm going to do now is I need the same stamp set, which is hidden somewhere. So we just remove the pheasant, like so. Take that pheasant wording. So we've got this pheasant wording from the same stamp set. Let's just move this on one side. I'm not going to create both cards because we'll be here till Christmas if I carry on. We'll at least create one of the cards and then we'll show you all the backgrounds that we've done. So we're going to ink that word pheasant and now I've just hidden all my ink pads like you do. So just to get another piece of card, just ink the pheasant wording. And I'm using not turn black ink because that will bring the black back in from that circular black piece. love that wording absolutely love it but look how it's got little words inside the pheasant wording just think it's lovely and just take this cut our wording out i'm sorry but somebody must keep being going next some near my door 
So I'll move my pheasant out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this pheasant word in here. So I can still see the numbers. Let's move this out of the way. Just so I can still see the numbers and I'm not covering all the background up. So just add this pheasant word. I'm just going to add it here. Just to give me a little bit of balance. So it's sort of, it's pleasing to the eye. So I'm just adding that. My hands are in a terrible state. So much mess. Now let's just put these dist distress cranes away. Just so that we've got a little bit of room. On our desk but what I want to show you is I love that little circle there how it's gone over this tail yes I know it is the little things so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add the shading around the pheasant, around the pheasant wording. Like so. Just, just to bring that shading element in and just so that it pops against the background. Like so. The sun's actually shining now. It was it was freezing this morning, blowing a gale, absolutely freezing. So before I add my finishing touches, I want to add it to black card. But let me just show you. Do you remember this, the low tack tape that was made from the background? Well, we're going to use a little bit. So I'm just going to cut the piece I want and I'm going to use some of this piece with the turquoise on. Cut it in half like so. So I'm using it like washi tape. So I had a piece there. Let's make this a little bit thinner. Like so. Just so we can add another little piece here. Whoops. I now can't pick the pieces up. I've got that many pieces in my hand. So I'm using it like a washi tape. Plus I'm bringing some of that turquoise into the background but in a different way what i'm going to do now is just add this to my card blank just so i can put the finishing touches on so i'm going to add it to a black card blank just with my pva adhesive just add that here Let's make sure it lines up like so. We've not finished yet. We need a few little finishing touches. Then I'm going to add this to my white card blank. Let's get some copy paper to keep my desk clean. So we'll just move these out the way. Just place this so you can see it on a clean background and just add this to a card blank. Like so, make sure my card is open in the right way. And just add that to the white card blank. And I just want to do a couple of finishing touches. So just so that you can see the card, I love this little touch of turquoise here and these little touches here. 
you see this is how you bring your card together and with the finishing touches so what i'm going to do now is on the stamp set there's a little hat so we're going to use that hat you know me i love a little quirky touch so i'm going to use the hat now it's just deciding whether i use oxides or i use black ink or i use a mixture of both it's just deciding but i think it's going to be black ink because I don't want to detract too much from anything else. So what I'm going to do, grab my scrap card, stamp my little hat. Let's stamp him again because I can't make my mind up whether I want to. I make my mind up at the time. I just stamp the two hats. I'm trying to get into good habits of putting the stamp set back again. Right, can I find my little scissors? Somewhere on the desk. It's a good job I have more than one pair. It's not until I tidy up that I suddenly dawns on me. Just. I wish you could see me cutting out now, the concentration with my tongue like sticking out. Do you ever do that when you're concentrating? I do. I've even done it on TV as well when I'm concentrating. So just to cut this out, just to add a little bit. This is the, the this is the hardest bit is cutting the hat out. This is actually harder than the little pheasant. The pheasant's so easy. go and what I want to do let's bring this onto the white paper just so that you can see I want to add a little hat there you see it's the finishing touches and then the numbers just peek, peek through so they become part of the design we're just adding that hat now does he need a hat oh yes of course he needs a hat Just add that there. Oh, what a dapper. What a dapper. Dapper gentleman. And that is your card done. I just love it. I love everything about it. I'm so pleased. So pleased with it. So we've done that. We've also done these backgrounds that you're going to create other cards with. So you've done that one, which I think would look lovely with the poppy. Can you imagine the poppy on there and then just doing the with the pot and the poppy? How long have I been on? Do I do this with the poppy? Oh, shall we create this card as well? So we've got the pheasant. I just love that. We've got these backgrounds. So you've got this background, my all-time favourite background. We've got that background. It's got a bit of the feather in. And we've got this background. All that from just an hour's worth of creating. But what I'm going to do, so if you wanted, you could add your pheasant and build it up exactly the same way as I've done this. So I, I would like to do the pheasant. I think either of those pheasants would look fantastic but i think for variety i should do the poppy so we'll get the poppy just to give variety i think we should get the poppy so what i'm going to do now we've got this background i bet some of you are screaming at me going no tracy no more no more so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab those distress distress crayons again and we're going to add some of the circle. So let's make sure we're actually in. So take a piece of card. I've just thought of another idea as well to go with the pheasant. So just adding this at the edge, just so I keep everything inside the aperture. 
that's better. So what I'm going to do is take the yellow, a yellow here and a yellow there. Then take the orange, which was spiced marmalade, add a bit of the spiced marmalade. And as you can see, I'm just scribbling it. And on the side, I've got a baby wipe that I can just touch my finger on and blend it. But you should find blending quite easy when you've done it on acrylic paints. That helps with the blending. Then I'm going to add some of that red and just blend the candied apple. I have to keep looking at everything because I'm using that many different colours that sometimes I forget which is which. So just add a good dollop of that candied apple just to give it a little bit of richness. And just to coordinate with your background. And then to give it a little bit more brightness, just give it a little bit more yellow just to add to that brightness a little bit more. Lift it up, see what we think. Oh, yes. Look, oh, I love it. You see, these backgrounds are making me happy. I'm just going to wipe my finger because I'll just end up placing it somewhere. It's all right on my pyjamas, but look at this. Do you know what I like about this? is that you can see the numbers through the distress crayons because they're translucent. Just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So let's place that on one side. And do you remember at the beginning of the video, we had this background that we brayed off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of the poppies. Let me just move that out the end. So this time, let's see which poppy. You can use your acetate and this, I'm just got, I've got acetate everywhere. You can use your acetate, them are me flowers that help me with masking off, but I've just flung everywhere. So you can decide with your acetate which flower you want. And for me, it's going to be that one. And it's great because I don't have to do any colouring because the colouring is all done for me. What we do need to do is find an, ac an acrylic block somewhere in all my mess. Like so. So let's move this out of the way. And we've got this lovely background. Who needs to colour when you've got a beautiful background? Nobody. So I just need the flower head. And we'll stamp the flower head twice. So you don't even need to colour. Now, if you want to add a little bit more vibrancy to your flower, you could let that ink dry and go over with the Distress Crayon. Or you can use your coloured pencils if you want to go over the top. The idea is I'm showing you methods so you don't need to colour. It's giving you simplicity. But what you do need to remember is that you're stamping onto acrylic paint. And because of that, you need to blot. You're not going to get away with not blotting. So you do need to blot that because you end up with a really good... Do you see that on camera? Yes, you can see the shadows. So you do need to blot. We also need to dry. So let's plug that heat gun in and give them a dry. So what I'm doing here is we've had an hour of creating backgrounds and creating a card, but you can see that I'm using everything that I had, that I made, that I created. I'm not letting any of the backgrounds go to waste just so that you can see that. Blot again, just to make sure you're not going to smudge that flower. And what we're going to do, oops, is cut that flower out. And you've still got all that background. You could cut that into a card size, 
and create another card. So plenty of options for creating your card. Just cut this out. And I don't need to leave a white edge because it's all coloured. Like so. And again, this is nice and easy to cut out. Nothing too difficult at all. So this is my uh, Papaver Poppy number 395 that I'm using. And the one before that was the pheasant. So we're going to have two flower heads this time. Just cut those out. Just take your time and cut them out. Sometimes I leave a white edge. Um, but on this occasion, because the image is already coloured, because I've created that background, I don't need to leave that white border. Each project varies each time that you do it. So what I'm going to do now is just cut into that petal there, just so I can bend it a little bit. Cut into it there a little bit. And what I'm going to do is, as you've seen me before, I'm just going to scrunch the flower just to give it a little bit more life. I don't like it when the flowers are super flat. I like them to have a little bit of life. It also depends on the flower. And what I'm going to do is just see if there's any paint. Yes, there is. Just on my cut and dry foam and just go round those edges. Just apply the paint that you've got on your cut and dry foam and you can wash your cut and dry foam afterwards just in warm water, but just colour the edges. So what we're going to do is make sure my hands are clean. Let's just give them another wipe because I'm paranoid. And we're just going to add one of these, one on top of the other to make our flower. Just make it slightly off centre. Don't make it perfect just so it's more of a bit like a double poppy. Just set. There we go. So then you've got that. What we're going to do then is we're going to grab my pots. Where's my pot stamp? Oh dear. So I keep them in a folder and I keep my little cut out bits in the folder as well if I want to have masks. So I keep everything in a folder just so they don't get lost. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use these pots. I'm going to use this little tall pot here. So this is the stamp I'm using. Just grab my acrylic block. Just plonk that down. And we're just going now I'm going to use this background there's a little bit of the background there so why not use it and I'm going to ink my stamp and it's a good lesson in showing that because you've created all these backgrounds you could create a book and it would be a cohesive book because everything works together beautifully so just giving you lots of different ideas to keep you busy I mean, you may not want to stay busy, but just in case you're looking for something to inspire you, just to get you going again. Just give that pot a dry because we've stamped onto acrylic paint. And you know, I was about to reach for one of my new stamps then. Ooh, that would have been a bit iffy, wouldn't it? So easy to do, but I think what I love about the stamps is what I'm trying to do with my stamps is build a library and what I'm trying to do is build a library that will be used all the time a library where all the stamps work together with others in the range so that the fonts work together and everything so just cut that out 
like so. So we've now got our lovely little pot. Let's bring in the pots again. We're in a bit of a mess here because we've got stamps all over the place, like you do. Now on the stamp set, the poppy one, there's lots of grasses. And if you wanted, you could add all the grasses as well, if you wanted to add that. So just put that back in the folder. It means that we don't get in a mess. How can you put a stamp set down on an acrylic block? and then actually lose the stamp set and the acrylic block, which is exactly what I've done. There you go. So what I want to do now is bring this pot stamp set back in. Just remove that. Just take any figure. It's got little figure one, figure two, figure threes. Just take that little bit of ink Oh, figure five. See, I just picked it randomly. Oh, figure three. I can't read. Just add that to my... Like so. So I'm just going to give that a little dry because, again, it's stamped... onto acrylic paint. Let's bring this in. What we're going to do is we're going to add this here and I'm just going to um, draw the stem in just because I can put the stem exactly where I want to. So I still want to see that blue text. So just like so. So I'm just judging where I'm putting everything. So first of all, I'm going to put my pot where I want it. And then I'm just going to lift it up before I start and start drawing the stem. Like so. Just so I can decide where that stem's going. So I've just drawn a squiggly line. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. So just now a dear my pot. Like so, and I'm going to take that scrap paper and as always, just press that pot down. Just using my scrap paper, that's it. And you can manoeuvre it or whatever you wish if it isn't in quite the right place. Just add a bit of adhesive here, like so. Now that poppy needs a little bit more life. So I've got a yellow gel pen. And I'm just going to add a few little dots just to that flower, like so. Then what we're going to do is add some white splatters. So then we're going to take our, let me just move that pen out the way or else I forget where it is. What we're going to do is take our ink tense pencil, make sure your hands are clean. That's almost an impossibility today. And I'm just going to draw around my pot just so it's, it looks properly shaded. Like so. And you know, I'm actually I'm actually quite chuffed with this session because um I wasn't I wasn't planning um let me just sort the camera out. just sorting the camera out because it's just gone a little bit funny there we go that brings the camera back again so we're still going that's fine 
the camera just went in low battery mode but it's fine we're back so what i'm doing is i'm i was saying that i'm quite pleased with the way that this has come together because it's just lovely to create something and it's off the cuff and it's just you get a lovely background i'm just so pleased with it i really am and you've we've created all them backgrounds and they've come together really lovely So just adding a touch of shading, like so, just to my pot, just so that it stands out a little bit more. So now we've got this flower down. Let me just hold that down and just add a little bit of shading around the flower. I'm holding the flower down because it's the, the glue's not quite set. So I'm just holding it down in place. That's all I'm doing. So I do apologise if the camera went a little bit funny for you. It's just because it went in low battery mode. So I sorted that out while we were live. Like so. So just blend this out. Just blend a little bit of that shading out. Just to add a little bit of shadow in the background and I'm hoping you can see that okay especially with me working on white paper hoping that'll show it up a little bit more there we go in real life you can see a shadow it, it's sort of got a shadow on the on the background just so that you can see that okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my word from my pots, the word grow. Let me just uh, grab. So the word grow, which I'm sure we've got some spare card here. There's so many things here that I can use, bits of background and everything. It's lovely. I hope you have as much fun as I've had. I don't enjoy the cleaning up. The cleaning up is a pain every time. Because I use so much stuff. And I always think that I'm keeping the colours to a minimum and everything. And then I still end up with a, a mess everywhere. Just cutting that weird grow out. So, bring this in. And let's add the weird. And I'm not putting it at the top because I still want to see them circles, but I don't want the eye to roam all over the place. I don't want it to be there, here, there. I want it in this little cluster. So I'm adding it to this little cluster, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a card blank just so that you can see what it looks like if we've actually got a card that will work on the size and i think it's important that you see the finished card and what it looks like on a card blank because it makes all the difference when it's on a card blank i think it makes a massive difference of course, we haven't got no black card. So I'm just creating a black mat for the card as well. So the card was four and a half inches by six and a half inches, as the previous one was. just so that we can add it to our black mat just so that you can see that 
Then add it to a white card blank. Don't forget your inserts on your cards. And then we've just got to finish the little bit of grow here. Just add that touch of shading. Sometimes you don't need the shading, but if you've got a very colourful background and it doesn't pop enough, then you need the shading. Like so. So it's entirely up to you which bits you add and which bits you don't. And that's our card blank finished. But what I was thinking was, just on this, I'll bring the two cards in in a second. Just leave that there, preferably so it looks nice on the card. You see these, you've got these little numbers and bits. Have I got some somewhere else as well? You've got these little bits of numbers where we cut out the pheasant. So, just to add another little touch on the pheasant. Can you see you've got that little number? And I'm thinking just a little bit of a number will go lovely on the background of that black. Just so that the black, I keep thinking about these designs you see, just so the black looks like it works with the background. So I'm just going to add those numbers there. So there's your card for your pheasant finished. I've used absolutely everything we created. And then, let me just make sure I'm not getting nothing sticky on the back. And then we've created the poppy card where we've also used our backgrounds. And you know, I'm so pleased with those. We'll put them side by side so that you can see the cards. And then don't forget, we created these backgrounds also that you can use in another project. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video, the little mini workshop. I'd love your feedback. I'd love to know what you think. I know I waffle on a little bit, but I do hope you enjoyed them. And I do hope that you'll use all your leftover pieces that we created and just lifting these up so that you can see these as well these little tapes that we created as well so I hope you will use everything that we've created and and if you can tag me if you add it to Facebook or if you add it to YouTube I'd love it if you tag me and I hope you have a lovely day the rest of the day and I'll speak to you all soon take care everybody love to all bye for now